Well, hello there, Underdog Leadership Podcast listeners. It is so awesome to be joining you wherever you are with a cup of coffee, or maybe you're just doing your morning stretches, or maybe it's the end of the day and you're snuggled up in bed having a listen before you turn off the light. And it is my great pleasure to introduce you to my colleague, my friend, my co-conspirator, Sherry Schaefer. Welcome, Sherry. Thanks. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. Well, you are all going to fall in love with Sherry as much as I have. Um, she's going to tell you a little bit about herself. She's going to tell you a little bit about where she and I collaborate. But I think it would be worthwhile for us to back up and go back to that first time you and I met Sherry. It was at an AHP conference, Association of Healthcare Professionals. And the interesting thing was that it was one of the first forays for me out of the out of the gate trying out something. It was called Leadership Strategies in Six Steps or Less. And you found me later. Why don't you pick up the story from here? Do you remember? Yeah, sure. Oh, I totally remember. So you were presenting and all of the points you presented resonated with me. I just was, you know, I could have been a kid with my mouth dropped open. I'm like, <laughs> wow, like that's exactly what A, I need right now in my career and B, what I, I agree with and believe in. So then, I, yeah, I found you at, at, the, uh, at the break and said, yeah. I think we need to talk some more. I think there's some things yeah. we could talk about. And after that, the second time we chatted, I, we were on, it was a phone call. And I remember yeah. I was in, on my deck. It was a beautiful, sunny day. And we chatted for, we were gonna talk for 20 minutes. And two hours later, yep. we said, we need to figure out how we're going to be together and yeah. work together. So yeah, it was great. It sure was. I remember the energy from that day and we've evolved since then. So, but before we get into all that and, and Chavender and how we work together, please introduce yourself to our listeners, Sherry. Who are you? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Who is Sherry Schaefer? Uh, well, you know what I have, I am a uh, First of all, I'm a mother of two boys who are in their 20s. Um, very exciting times for sure. And uh, and then I have my uh, love and passion. I'll tell you a little bit, a fun story you might not know, Jenny, is that when I was in university, I was taking recreation. Um, I took recreation therapy and special event planning. And my goal was to be Julie McCoy on the love boat. <laughs> And so instead of going on cruising, I uh, took up uh, recreation therapy in hospitals and um, did um, kind of the same as on a cruise boat. I planned activities and events for seniors. And, uh, and then from there, I evolved into uh, fundraising, which was an easy move and have been doing that. So for, for the last 35 years, I've worked um, fundraising. I have worked on a lot of teams. I've led a lot of projects. We've project. I did a project move for a full hospital, and mm -hmm. um, that had a lot of different projects in it and a lot of teamwork. And that's where I started to gain my love of um, teams and people and working together, collaborating, and and seeing other people grow in their in their you know, in their roles too, right? So it's it's been a really fun, a very fun journey. I've had a lot of different titles and uh, which just is a step and just an mm -hmm. indicator of what you do. But um, but really it's been a real evolution for me and I've, mm -hmm. I've loved every minute of it. Mm. You kind of epitomize that that third phase, right? The, the third chapter, there's so much that we've done, but we're, we're no longer defined by it too. I love too that you started by mentioning that you're a mother because I, I think that's just very much who you are and it's fantastic. Now, I want you to dive into one subject a little bit more. I remember the first time we talked about mentorship. You have a passion. Can you tell me where it comes from and um, maybe your version of mentorship? Because everybody's is a little different, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think I've always been interested in mentorship. Even when I was doing um, my master's, you know, I really focused on team building and that whole idea of supporting each other, peer, uh, peer support. Um, so mentoring really is just really the next step in that or a part of that. And um, I had the pleasure of um, just listening in on a session at an AFP session, actually, and that um, the speaker they had there talked about the three parts of mentorship and and how mentorship is really important at all levels of your career. 
-hmm. And that made me stop and pause and go, okay, well, usually we think of mentorship just at the beginning of our career, but not, you know, and maybe at the, like, as you shift from one level to the next level, you need to re, you know, uh, dive more into mentorship then. But he really talked about how everybody needs mentorship. You need, you need a group of people or a, um, a support system at every level. Even the CEOs need that because you can imagine as you, as you change positions in your, uh, in your organization, there are less and less people at your level mm -hmm. and you have less and less people to talk to. So you need, you need to mm -hmm. find mentors that are peer mentors that you trust and you can and support. The other piece of that that he talked about is our responsibility to mentor to others and that there is a benefit to us. When we mentor others, it reminds us of our, of our theory, our philosophy, our belief system, and that we, you know, we need to be able to support others, but it helps us to stay grounded and, and have a good direction. We can see our, our true north. Being able to articulate our true north, right? Yeah. Um, and just to pick up on, uh, so north-south mentorship and east-west mentorship. The north-south, what I love about north-south, I'm I tend to be in the north part, although not always in mentorship. I I certainly have pay and pay for business coaches to be in masterminds where I get a chance to try, to experience different perspectives on the world. But just like it's why I have a younger hairdresser, Sherry, right? I want to stay hip. And so that north-south mentorship really keeps me current. How do I put captions on Instagram? <laughs> Whatever it is I'm trying to figure out. Um, sometimes I think east-west mentorship gets missed. Tell me more about why you think that peer mentorship is so important. Yeah, you know, I mean, again, when, when this speaker was talking about the three levels, the peer mentorship was really key. And at that point, I, did, I, I reached out to some of my uh, colleagues, maybe some would see them as um, competition, um, mm -hmm. other fundraisers, you know, all looking for the same dollar. But we, we really needed to support each other. And, and part of it is things like, you know, like just administrative um, type challenges that we have mm. right and you know and staffing challenges and you know you 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 bounce things off of each other and sometimes you share things like you share people you share ideas you know and you're like oh I did this thing that would really work for you and when you have that um, ability to work with a group of peers um, and you have that trust with them you yeah. can really share a lot of things that do help and and forward the uh, industry, which is really actually quite self-fulfilling too, right? Like that really supports your, your philosophy of having a giving community. So that's really key as well. But that peer mentorship, no matter what your industry is, it's really invaluable. You really need to have that. Yeah. Something that I didn't realize when I first started. So you and I are connected because we love doing group programs. We love doing group coaching. I also work one-on-one, -on -one, but I set, still will always do group coaching because that learn, that shared experience really matters to me. When I was seeking feedback for my um, Chavender Leadership Lounge program, I asked the ladies, and these are all CEOs, EDs, Sherry, and I said, tell me, what is it the benefit for you? And I was expecting stuff like, you know, it's great to hear other ideas. It's great to have a facilitator, you know, that sort of, I'm not alone. And I did get all that. But the other thing I got was the opportunity to impart my knowledge to your point about articulating my thoughts and imparting my knowledge to others and to be understood and heard was really empowering and valuable to me. Like kind of like I do have some things figured out, right? Um, and that actually surprised me, I have to say. Yeah, you know, I think it's about confidence too. You know, like we we need our peers around us to um, to be able to just throw some ideas out and them to say, I don't know if that'll work or that's yeah. a great idea. Why don't you tell others? And it builds your confidence. It gives you a safe place to to just um, you know to explore some options yeah. and some ideas. Um, but you, we do need that. We've all everybody needs that. That's a that's a real social need of of humans as a whole you know, and, and the importance of, of social groups, right? Yeah. So. And I think we always 
have the best of intentions. So right about now, if you're listening, maybe you're in some kind of a group, you're in some kind of a happy hour with your executive directors, or you have a bunch of development associates. Often I find AFP, Association of Fundraising Professionals, really is a network for those kinds of conversations. But the reality is that you eventually fall down, right? Stuff happens and the phone rings. No, just kidding. Um, but, you know, stuff happens and, and you end up realizing without, with the best of intentions, you fall off the wagon. Or in our world, our work is so important to us that it takes over everything. We have some big event or whatever. And to that point, Sherry, I think that's where the commitment, investing in these group coaching calls and saying, okay, I am going to save this money or I'm going to invest my professional development budget on my learning and I'm going to commit to being with this group and I'm going I'm to hold myself, but I'm going to hold them accountable. When I don't show up, I am letting the group down. Um, I think there's a, a real power behind that and sort of like a, a momentum. Um, this might be a really interesting spot to shift to the program under Chavender, which you specifically, it's your baby. T tell us more about oh, Next it. Level. I know you do. Tell us about Next Level Talent Development. Well, uh, Next Level Talent Development is really um, comes from the idea of, of um, helping people to grow from uh, where they currently are to where they aspire to be. It's about, you know, the people who want to to grow and learn in their in their field and in their personal career uh, development. And but it, it what I realized after the first, it only took a few sessions to realize that exactly what you're talking about, that power of people about being about having a support network that you can chat about different ideas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've had groups where they've been spread across the country. We've had groups where they've been, you know, um, focused in one area. But no matter where they are and how that works, they're sharing ideas back and forth mm -hmm. and, and, and giving each other ideas. Somebody will say, I've got this challenge and, you know, we're working on this, on this, um, you know, on this project and people mm -hmm. say well have you thought of this or have you tried this or I have a contact for you you know and that's the power of helping each other and it doesn't take long for a group that's meeting you know for six months um, to really gel and start to you start to see that evolution of that support yeah. and I know that a lot of the groups we've done have continued with supporting and helping each other and that network they can make a call and they can say yeah. hey you know um, I've got this, you remember we talked about this in our group yeah. and, and can you, what do you think? And so they've created that network that goes beyond, it goes totally beyond the six months, but that whole, uh, that whole mm. program is, I mean, it's such a delight to talk to everyone and learn what others are doing. I get as much out of it as I, you know, yeah. as I hope they get out of it, but the topics are great. You know, mm. we talk about everything from communication changing your mindset, shifting your, um, shifting your language, um, yeah. to help you, you know, gain, um, uh, and build relationships with others, whether that's with colleagues or with clients or, or donors, depending on what your field is in, um, you know, to negotiating, you know, like mm -hmm. knowing how to negotiate and, and, and successfully negotiate. So those are hard ones. Negotiation is a hard one. And I think too, like, especially like that mid-level, um, mid-level talent is kind of next level has been targeted for that. So that mid-level sort of, you know, not new to the career, but not seasoned. Yeah. The first time you do the negotiation, the first time you have a hardship, uh, you know, to have that kind of group experience that kind of unpack it together and analyze it and kind of talk yourself off the ledge. Um, and I love that it's not just fundraising focus. I think that's really important. Most of the time, I mean, I'm curious your thoughts, but my experience is you can read the books to figure out the fundraising component. You can kind of live in a, in a shop and figure out how fundraising is done, but it's all those soft skills around it. It's all those people skills that, that we call them the, you know, the, the gushy, soft, gushy skills of, of how to bring people around to your way. That's really what next level talent is about, correct? Yeah, you know, I I mean, I think next level talent, what we see is, uh, like you say, people who are beyond their first their first role, they've moved into something else. And we see this all the time where people have, um, you know, they've got a great skill set and they've got they either have the education or the experience that has given them this great skill set um, and they're solid in the theory. 
but it's making it, you know, it's, it's dealing with what's got throws, what's, mm. what's thrown at you from the sidelines that um, you really are, have to be creative thinking, right? And um, that's what pulls the leaders out of us, right? When we're able to, um, to respond and be responsive to things that are ch ever changing. And that's the one thing you can count on in life is that things change <laughs> and there's always change. So you have to come up with that. And leaders, leaders know how to, how to make the change. So it's going from being a, a really good, what, what I would call in the medical field, a, a clinician to a leader and not all clinicians are meant to be leaders and not all leaders are good clinicians. You know, like it's just, it's, yeah. it's the way we are, but people who are good and they have a desire to grow and learn they can find their way. And it's this, this has been really great. It's a kind of a magic session. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love being a fly on the wall in the sessions and adding my two cents. I think also <laughs> just to highlight, there's a couple ways to engage in next level. There's the, I'm looking for the support, or sometimes it comes from a boss that wants to elevate someone in their team, or maybe there's potential that somebody sees and they just don't have the time to, to support that person. They will come into next level talent and we run those programs every spring and fall. Um, but the other way we've done it, this is kind of new. Maybe you can talk a little bit about more of the organizational next level talent, Sherry. Yeah, we've had a few of those and, um, they are kind of fun because, you know, I think you and I, when we first started the next level, we thought, okay, we'll bring people from across the country or different places and they'll be able to exchange ideas and we'll be able to work through some of the strategies that we, mm -hmm. you know, we present and there'll be, you know, different information. When you bring one organization together, they're already meeting regularly. But what we've seen is that it really opens up the conversation for them into areas they don't normally talk about. They're, they're stepping outside the day-to-day -day business and mm -hmm. diving into the, the pieces of the job that go beyond the, the everyday, right? That help them yeah. to think broader and help them to, you know, stay focused on goals for the, you know, as a group. And, and I love sometimes what we see, and I've seen it so much, like, I've seen it more than once where they're complimenting each other, but they yeah. wouldn't do it in the day to day. They're like, Oh my God, I really love how you've done that piece. And, and they're like, Oh, I've never heard you say that. And thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So there's this, this whole piece that doesn't come out in day to day mm -hmm. work that they really gain an appreciation for each other and the work. And they, I think they come together as a team more in a, and strengthen their teamwork in a different way. That's, yeah really helps them move, move the needle, right? You, what you're describing is a richness um, to the conversations that we're having. I think Zoom just about killed us, eh? With the whole, like there was no small talk in Zoom. It was all business. It was all get down and, and we've lost something. Um, and to your point, when, when folks are within the same organization, just because they're in the same organization doesn't mean they actually know each other. I know one of the organizations we're working with, um, we're working with their, with some high performing talent across, across the team. And we're talking a team of 40, 50 people and a, a group that's curated in the sort of six to eight size range. And not all of them are frontline fundraisers. Some of them are back end. Um, but to, uh, use this next level as a retention tool, as a tool to encourage reward. Uh, also, yeah. that sense of community. I know that's community. Um, corporate can be seen as a cutthroat kind of a place. Um, I'm just going to call a spade a spade. But to bring that sense of community and support across pillars in the organization, that's something I get really excited about. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the message for a lot of uh, the, for these organizations that come in is that they're, people believe in them, their leadership yeah. believes in them, and we want to invest in you. And that, yeah. that piece is really, I mean, that you don't see that everywhere, right? No. And so, but it, we, it makes that is so powerful, it really makes a yeah. difference for them. Yeah. yeah, and I'm hearing more and more people are saying, uh, we've always been saving the professional dollars for the, the senior leadership suite. And as great as that is, um, we know that the future leaders are coming from that mid-level. So whether it's retention, keeping them in the shop to move them into those roles, to not lose that knowledge transfer, whether it's just elevating talent pools are shallow, Sherry, my Lord. I don't know what it's like in your neck of the woods in Alberta, but when we post 
the the kind of applicants we're getting are incredibly shallow and the um, employee definitely is has the upper hand so anything we can do to reinforce how important our staff and our talent are with programs like this um, I think is really important really important yeah I mean think about you know someone comes from that from their technical field and or their clinical field and then they're moving into um, they're moving into a leadership role but no no real training you know, necessarily, right? So this is a a way for them to kind of explore that um, and strengthen their skill set in this area, because some of it's, you know, natural and, and instinctual, but some of it, you really, you do have to learn, and there's not always time to do that, as you say, like the day to day is crazy. Um, But they, you know, what they gain is the confidence Mm -hmm. and, and competence to continue on. And that's where we see when they get it at that level, at that mid level, they, they, like you say, they elevate, and I think faster because Mm -hmm. it's beyond just the skills we talk about or the strategies we talk about. It's the confidence piece that helps them to Mm -hmm. gain other stuff and to look for other things and, and see the value in, um, in mentorship so that they, they continue on that path and it helps them further their career. Yeah. And the organizations, um, the beneficiary uh, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And when you think about return on investment, it's such a smart investment, right? Long term, it's powerful. I'm reminded of my original vision for Travender Coaching. I don't know if you remember, but I did this watercolor, which had like Canada and then these big colorful circles. I'm going to have to go back to that. And it was this vision of people coaching people, coaching people, coaching people. And that this way of life, this sort of approach to our work, because our work can be tough sometimes. We are, you know, we are put under huge pressure cookers. We've got to learn how to be resilient and to find the joy. And I think that these learning pods or whatever you want to call them, experiences, masterminds, or in our case, next level talent are the, um, you know, the Petri dishes for us to try things out and get comfortable. And that vision of the world of trying new things and, and getting out of our comfort zones, that totally aligns with Jenny Mitchell and Chapter. Totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which is, I think, yeah, when we go back to how we first met and why we connected, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We get into trouble. Those podcasts, those of you that are listening, Sherry and I, well, even without wine, we can get into a lot of trouble because we have, we are the idea generators. Are we not, Sherry? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We come up with some ideas and then, you know, and then we get really excited and we're going to do all these things and then we have to, yeah, and then we have to figure out how is that going to happen and Mm -hmm. focus. Yeah. So yeah. we we create these ideas and then we we find the people for the programs um, and we reach out and we build networks because that's what we do. We're professional yeah. relationship managers. Right. Yeah. And yeah. at this point, I think we can say we've had uh, we've covered North America with our program. So I'm um, really proud of that. OK, so let's shift gears. We've talked about next level talent development, which is sort of our mid level. Um, of course, I would love to just take two minutes to talk about uplift because that's actually technically in another way how we connected was it was called something else at the time. What was it? What did I originally call it? Fundry. Oh God, this is, this is a couple of years a, back. It was a mastermind. I think we it was a, it mastermind. a mastermind. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah. the uplift program really is about, um, bringing senior leaders together with a chance to, uh, share there's some content absolutely but not in like a module approach more in like a learning a case study an experiential thing um, to really strive and elevate and to provide accountability for things Um, and i remember that that first group sherry which you were part of was a pretty pretty magical group and i i believe you guys are still in touch correct oh yes oh yeah we keep we keep in touch all the time which is great like they're a, a great group of people I, I mean, I, I think that group, I think you're right. It was magical because um, it was just the right fit. You know, when you have people that, you know, you feel comfortable with and you can share, um, that really does help. But, I, you know, the facilitation made that possible, right? And yeah. I think your vision uh, for the group really, um, really worked. And and I remember, you know, when we when we started it, um, the whole idea. I mean, I went around and talked to a few people at at, at a um, a regional meeting and said, "Are you interested? Are you interested? Let's go. Let's do it. Let's we could do yeah. this. Let's get her here." And and we made it happen. And it yeah. was, um, I think that's what made it great, you know. And yeah. the team is good. We talk we talk a lot. We we stay connected. We help each other out. 
um, you know, someone's looking for a policy or a procedure, we call like, what do you got? Oh, let me mm -hmm. share. Right. So it, it goes on far beyond the program, but the program yeah. itself really got us to um, focus in and hone some skills that we would, you know, on an everyday level, we wouldn't do. Yeah. We would just yeah. Let that be. I had this visual yeah. of us sharing the yoke of leadership together, that responsibility that comes with leadership. I mean, people that are executive directors, CEOs, they, t they don't take their work lightly, but to share it and to your point about at the top of the food chain, it's a lot harder because you can't talk to oh. your staff. You can't, it's not part of the job description and it's not really appropriate for you to dump your problems on your direct report. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you need people and that's that, that was what really, you know, got me really wanting to be part of mentorship, right. And, and really develop a program that I could see um, helping other people too, yeah. because, because you, like I said, it doesn't matter what levels, whether you're, you know, it's, it's the top level or you're mentoring, like you're mentoring up, you're mentoring down, you're mentoring sideways. You really, you, you need mentorship to, yeah. to grow and learn. I mean, if you want to stay the same yeah, and just do the same thing every day, that's good. You, you know, that there's nothing wrong with that. And some people love that. Um, but if you want to grow and learn, you need the people, you need people around you and you need to be able to uh, throw out ideas and, and talk about challenges in a safe space that in a safe yep. space that you know in a trusted space i guess that you yep. you know you can you gain from yeah it's amazing yeah i think that trusted space that's actually my big takeaway you know the cocktail party is not the trusted space the um the dinner table my husband has a certain slant on things and after a while he gets really sick of hearing me is not a trusted space <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and girlfriends are great. Like, I don't get me wrong. I think I've got wonderful girlfriends and there's a couple I can speak to, but that intersection of my work and who I am and having people that really get me, get what I'm about. And, um, you know, I have an A on my head that says ambitious. Um, it's, it's not even, I want to do, it's not even ambitious for the sake of ambition. It's like, I want to continue getting better every day, Sherry. And, you know, as you're in your third yeah. chapter, I look at you and you're kind of an epitome of that. Like you're, you're getting better every day and you're taking on new things. Maybe you want to talk about, um, cause I can't help, but have my year next 50 hat on as well. Like what are some of the joys of being in that third chapter for you? That's an interesting question. Huh. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think, one of the things is, you know, recognizing your, you know, what strengths you have gained over time and that you have, you have the ability to share them with others and help others. I think that's one thing I love is that I can take, you know, some of my life experiences, some of the knowledge and share it with a younger group that's coming through or a new, or somebody who's coming into the field new. Um, I, I love that piece. I really do. Um, mm -hmm. I think too, that, you know, when you move into that, yeah, your third chapter, I love that title, um, that, you know, you, you become a little bit more um, open to, you, you don't feel like, oh, I've got to follow this track. I've got to follow mm -hmm. this track only. Like you're open to some things coming from different directions and really challenging you and, um, and also trying things that, you know, might be different and out of the box that you, you maybe, you know, you're trying to stay on a track, you're trying to get down that road, but now it's like, ah, uh, I think I can try a few new things. And I am definitely in that try new things era. Yeah. I'm at that point. Yeah. What, what have you done that's new lately? Tell us more. Oh goodness. Uh, my new things. Oh, you've caught me off guard. I have to think about what's, what's so new and different, but I'm mm. um, a big thing for me is, um, you know, traveling differently. Yeah. I, we're, we're into traveling and we're, we're, but we've had to rethink it, of course, like everybody else with COVID. And so traveling differently, I think that's a big one and really exploring different cultures. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, that's big, but, and I think, um, you know, I mean, I've started to do some, uh, reading on writing. I haven't yeah. done a lot of writing and yeah. my creative, I always have a bit of a creative side to me. Um, I love to do, you know, crap, like I'm a craft kind of girl. Right. But, mm -hmm. but now I'm exploring my painting and different things that I've never felt that I'm good at. You know, I mean, I probably the one area I won't go into for everyone's sake will be singing. 
although I do love singing in the car when no one can hear me, but I probably won't do that. But, you know, painting and having a creative outlet, I think I've been so focused, you know, I mean, I, I've career. I focused on career, right? Yeah. And family, career and kids. Yeah. And, um, you know, now I, I want to focus a little bit on me and, and yeah. doing some of those creative things. So, yeah. I love the creative piece. I mean, certainly I started as a classical musician, but got very quickly into the sort of masculine hurdle jumper kind of world. And I'm kind of like you, mm -hmm. just to pick up on one thing, I think at this stage, I am okay being crappy at things. Right? So yeah. I'm not, I'm not, it's not the end of the world. I used to always want, I wouldn't touch it actually, if I wasn't good at it, let's just call a spade a spade. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm okay with a shitty first draft. I'm okay with a crappy piece of pottery. Um, yeah. We'll have to do some fun stuff you and I together. Cause I too love my, my watercolors. Um, but I, I don't, I don't spend enough time on them. I'm still, I just need to slow down. I think, you know, for There's me, it's slowing always down. something to do, right? I got I can just yeah. fit this one more thing in. Yeah. Right. But I think yeah. what, I think what's really important for, you know, for me at this stage anyways, is, is, you know, really taking the time to pause mm. and spend some time for me to help me grow in a different way, you know, have that, that other side of the brain work happening. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And, and I think, yeah, I think we're so focused on, on work and not to say that's bad. It's just a phase no. of life. You know, you, yeah. you do that for a while and then there's a yeah. realization that, you know, there's, you can add, you can become, um, you can add that in and still be yeah. good at, at your work, but you can do some other yeah. stuff too. Yeah. So yeah. one of the objections I always hear when I'm sort of talking to people about programs with Chavender is I don't have time. Right. And one of the things I always say when I ask that is, um, you know, I don't say time is a social contract construct. That might be a little bit intimidating, but what I do say is there is always enough time for the things that are most important. So it's okay if coaching's not the most important thing for you right now, or your desire to change isn't strong enough to, to engage in that. But, um, you know, challenger programs are designed, whether it's next level or uplift to enhance your existing experience. It's not an add on to what's going on in your world. It really is kind of an expansion. That's the word that keeps coming to mind. Yeah. Um, it, it's not like there's homework. Like I'm not a big module gal. I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah. There's no homework in it. This is about reflection and, yeah. you know, being responsive and, and seeing things from a different angle. You know yeah. how some people, they talk about, you know, if I could just step outside of myself and see it from a different point of view I think I would be able to get it better this is what this is about yeah it's stepping outside and seeing it um and and really exploring are there other ways to do yeah. this that make it more fulfilling maybe more efficient but more fulfilling and get to the place where you know you feel really good about what you're doing right don't we all want that right yeah <sighs> To I feel really good about what we're doing. And and to know at my stage, it's like I can't bicycle any faster, Sherry. So finding the strategies and the techniques, I'm not saying I'm going to get to a four-hour work week, but I'd like to aspire to doing things that I know will have the most impact rather than throwing spaghetti on the wall. And I, I really think coaching, um, you know, whether it's one-on-one -on -one, through Uplift, through, um, you know, Next Level Talent, they're all tools to help you navigate the world just a little bit smoother. Right. Yeah. And that I, I, I totally, I totally agree. The navigation piece is huge because there's mm -hmm. so much coming at us all the time. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and you think about it, okay, you're supposed to be on top of things like read the news, be know what's happening in the world, see how that affects your career, how it affects your job, your, you know, oh. your organization. And then you're supposed to know also all the skill sets that need to happen yeah. and what's changing in the leadership part and what's changing Ugh. in the technical part. By the time you're done, oh my gosh, there's so much to navigate. Right. But if you can do that, if you can pause and give mm. yourself a little space, to um, just um, explore a couple of new strategies, mm. explore for yourself just to gain that, you know, confidence and that, um, you know, knowledge that will mm. support you in moving forward. I, I think you go farther. I, I, I've seen it with the people who are in the programs. They go farther than they would have without. It's slow down to hurry up. Right? Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Slow down. And I'm not asking you to write the strategy document just for the sake of writing the strategy document. I'm asking you to write the strategy document for you to think about how it will unfold rather than throwing yourself at the campaign or throwing yourself at the marketing tools. This, this is resonating yeah. for me for sure. Yeah. Um, so those of you that are listening, I hope you have enjoyed this sort of moment, this snapshot with my beautiful, kind, compassionate, uh, curious colleague, Sherry Schaefer. Um, Sherry, you are uh, a wonderful, wonderful person to work with. And uh, I hope I hope more and more people get a chance to, to be in your world and, and experience your gifts. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for allowing me to be part of your world because I think that's the best part is the synergy and the fun and and we have yeah. seen good impact. So oh, I'm man. excited to see what, what, I'm excited to see what's coming. We yep. got stuff happening. We got stuff happening. So um, on that note, stay tuned. Um, on a simple note, you can follow up with me at Jenny at Chavender.com. Um, and I can put you in touch with Sherry about Next Level Talent. Obviously, Uplift is, is the six-month program for our executives. One-on-one -on -one coaching is something I open up spaces regularly for. And I guess we should also just put a nod to Chavender Club, which is my Monday morning inspiration. 20 minutes, Monday mornings, 10 a.m. Eastern. Yes. It's it's a bit like a, is it like an espresso, Sherry? What would you call it? Yeah, it is like an espresso. It's like that boost in the morning, right? Yeah. Power bar, first thing. Power bar. Yeah. The Chavender Club power bar. I love it. And that is a really reasonable price point. It's a place for you to get into the Chavender world, a, ch a chance for you to experience it. I've heard from both sides, people that are in single shops, they love it because it's like having their own water cooler. And I've heard it from big shops just saying it's exactly what they need to kind of reset their fundraising mojo and get out there and 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 take on the world so wherever you're at um, I guess the message is there's a Chavender program to suit you or to open up the conversation um, to that opportunity and that change that you are in charge of making happen Sherry and I are here as your guides as your mentors as your support networks as your cheerleaders what else roles do we play I don't know facilitators um, but we are committed and we believe in the power of coaching um, and we really want each of you, whether it's um, through the podcast or through our, our work, to bring the best selves, bring your best selves to work. Isn't that what what all of us want, Sherry? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Let's let's just get in there and get her done. Yeah, I love, it. I love the Alberta. Get her done. Get her done. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, everybody, thanks so much for um, listening all the way to the end of the podcast. Sherry, thank you for being here. Thank you. My pleasure. And uh, yeah, you can always catch in the show notes, find out ways to connect with us. Um, find us on Instagram at uh, Jenny Chavender and of course, Underdog Leadership Podcast. That's underdog.leadership.podcast. And there are some freebies as well. I know I have my Meaningful Conversations video is still available um, and you can find out how to grab that for your viewing pleasure to have more meaningful conversations in the show notes. Whew, that's a big, long ending. Look at that. Sherry, thanks for being here. Bye, everybody. Go be great.